he didn't um so i hope i hope so but hello everyone happy tuesday it's usually not tuesday when this group comes together so um thank you for there he is awesome hi counselor Ate. oh he can't hear me yet there we go hi counselor Ate. um uh, we are, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order on Tuesday, June 4th at 632. This is not our regular GOL meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call on each member of the GOL committee uh, to make sure that we can hear them and they can hear us. And uh, if you can say present when I call you, that would be great. Kat DeAngelis. Present. Councilor Ate. Present. Thank you. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Great, and Councilor Ryan. I'm present. And I am present as well. All right, uh, we are here to do the interviews for the Charter Review Committee. Um, this body will be making recommendations to the council uh, as for the makeup of that, um, of that body. And we've got interviews today and tomorrow. So we should have some folks in the audience who have time slots, excellent. Um, and I'm pulling up, I'm, I'm vamping because my email was being slow to pull up. Athena, who's my first one on my list? I can't find it, sorry. Andy Churchill. Thank you. Could have guessed uh, based on alphabetical, I guess, I don't know. No. Already for, it's, it's not alphabetical, I know, I know, I know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Andy in. Uh, can you give me one second? I just want to talk through really quickly, just as a reminder to the to the committee, um, what the we what we agreed upon for the process. Um, although I think I guess I'm going to have to repeat this for each person, aren't I? So, I think we can go ahead and start, and I will yeah. I will say it for each person. All right. Hi, Andy. Are you with us? I see him. Yes, and I hear him. Amazing. Okay. So uh, the way that these interviews are going to work, Andy, is that we have seven questions for you. Uh, we ask that you keep your responses to one to two minutes. I will be asking the questions. So other GOL folks, if you don't mind muting at this point, that would be really helpful just so we don't have background noise. Um, and we will, we ask that you answer each question before we go on to the next. Sound good? Yep. All right, Andy, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Question one is about the charter. Can you tell us what your experience is with the charter? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the charter as it stands? Um, I'm looking at the question here. It looks like it's my understanding of the role of the charter review committee. Is that right? Um, the, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I chaired the charter commission, the commission that came up with this current charter. And um, as part of that charter, we put in section 9.6, periodic review of the charter, and that's what this is. So we, I think at the time we knew that we, we were trying to put together something that we could get a majority of support for both on the committee and in the town. And we knew that um, that might not be the, the, the end all and be all of the, of the perfect government for Amherst. So we put this in with the goal of having an ongoing process of continuous improvement uh, of the charter. So this is now, this committee will now take on that first round of review. And um, my sense is it's it's an outreach, it's a research and it's a collaboration kind of um, activity. So, you know, our goal is to propose potential changes to the council for them to consider. Um, as far as changes that I would suggest, um, I mean, we're to a certain extent we're constrained by state law that there's there are only some things that we can change. We can't change the composition or the mode of election or the terms of office of either the legislative body or the manager. So there are some constraints there, but um, you know, that I've I've recently seen a draft copy of some work that the League of Women Voters have done, and they've actually come up with a number of interesting ideas, many of which I'd like to consider. So, um, you know, I don't think I have a lot of time here to answer all of those things, but um, I would want to get a legal opinion up front on the scope of the changes that we can propose so that we're all clear on, you know, what we can do as what the council can do um, 
you know, what we can propose that the council could actually um, vote yes for and make happen, and whether or not we should be proposing other things that are beyond the scope and would require a new charter commission. So I could I could talk more, but I'm conscious of the time limit. Thank you. Uh, I just um, sent a quick text to Athena in a panic because now I want to make sure that I'm asking you the same ones that you've received. So m the next one that I have on my list is based on the selection guidance that we've sent you. Uh, yeah. Great. Whew, I had a panic, Andy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, based, no on, based on the selection guidance, can you tell us what experiences or skills that you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that will make it successful? Well, I, I tried to sum that up in my... Um uh you know statement of interest but basically um i've lived, lived in amherst since 95 i've raised my family here i've been an active participant in the community um in a variety of from, from you know brookfield farm to south congregational church to um being on the university town of amherst collaborative to being an occasional columnist for the bulletin and the amherst current um I mentioned that I chaired the Charter Commission that came up with the Charter that is now being reviewed. Um, I've done community engagement and outreach work, outreach work as part of the Charter Commission, as well as in my previous elected school committee role. Um, I have a master's in public policy and I managed an education research center at UMass for 11 years. And so I have a fair amount of experience in quantitative and qualitative data collection and research methodology. And um, I live in North Amherst. <laughs> so um, I, I think I, I, having been on the Charter Commission, I think that's extremely important get, given that I know, um, you know, or can dimly recall why we, you know, what we did and why we, and why we did it. And, um, and, and I also am, I'm not bound by that. I, I don't feel like I need to defend the, the past charter. I feel like that was a good first step, and I'm interested in in using my experience and my various um, areas of uh, background to uh, to take it to the next level. Thank you. Uh, again, correct me if this is if if I'm off base here. Uh, can you tell me how how do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Um, as someone who's been an elected official on several. Um, or several groups, um, I, I remain in touch with people that I served with or people that were my constituents or I'm, I, I have an interest in, in town affairs and I, it's something that I talk about with people all the time if I run into them at Big Y or um, downtown or whatever. So there's that, I, I read the Gazette. I, um, I, uh, I am part of a group the, that's, uh, um, working on the Amherst Current, so we try to pull together people's perspectives and uh, fact-based uh, stories on various issues in town. Um, I think it's most mostly a bunch of good government folks who uh, who, who just want to th see things well run well. I don't think it's a particularly ideological group, but I would say so. Between just having a network of folks that I've worked with in the past and having lived in town for almost 30 years, um, and then, you know, reading the, the what, what I can glean from the local press, um, I'd, I'd say I'm fairly up to date. Thank you. Can you tell us about an experience that you've had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Well, I've been on two uh, groups um, in which I didn't choose the membership. One was the school committee and the other one was the charter commission. And I think the most relevant one for this is the charter commission. Um, that was a group of nine people with very divergent viewpoints on whether they even wanted to change the town form of government or what they thought should be the the goal. And, and, um, and I chaired that group. And, um, you know, I, I think what I'm what I like about it is that I think everybody felt heard and, and I think everybody felt like they had input into the final product, whether they ended up supporting the final product or not. Um, and I think we ended up with a majority of a very diverse group um, supporting it. And then we had a, a majority, a strong majority, almost I think it was 60 percent of the voters who approved it. So. Um, it could have been a very, 
you know, locking horns kind of experience, but I think um, we were able to collaborate and we were able to respect each other's positions and come up with something that was a good, um, a good point of departure for the town. Thank you. I apologize for turning my video off. My um, internet has decided Tuesday meetings are uh, going to be chaos. I think we also just lost Lynn. Um, so I'm gonna continue on. Could you please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering changes to the charter when making recommendations to the council? Okay, I have uh, not this question. Oh, sorry, I did it. So sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay. No, you're Is right. The activities would be part of the work plan. Goodness gracious. Y'all, the chaos that is you happening. You have several drafts, I'm sure, that you're working from, so. Me too, and, and this has happened to me before, but let me let me reframe the, let me reread that again so that we've got it up to date. Could okay. you please uh, describe two to three activities that should be part of the work plan for the group? Thank you. Um, you know, I, I think it, like I said, I think it's, it, it's, it's a matter of outreach and research and then collaboration, but, um, you know, I, I think I'd really want to be thinking about how do we, you know, what's the mix of data collection that we can do that actually um, gets us the the widest range of input and in some way, you know, so people can't feel like they were left out of the process. Um, and I don't know exactly how you do that. I mean, I think you, you can have public forums and you can have surveys and you can have focus groups and you can take the committee to various places where, um, you know, outside of town hall or outside of the usual places. Um, but it's also a technical task and there's a certain amount of understanding that people have to have in order to put, to provide input. So it may be that we're, we have sort of a, you know, a, several rounds one sort of a research and, and information gathering stage and then another one is is more like um giving people something to react to and i think you know people who who may not be as eagerly following um you know the structure of town government may be um uh, more comfortable re reacting to something and saying we're thinking of changing it changing the, you know proposing these changes for these reasons what do you think of that um might be, you know, the sort of iterative process that would get us to something that would be, um, you know, hopefully supported and useful. Um, I do think we want to make sure that we're talking to counselors, that we're talking to town staff, and that we're talking, and also, you know, anybody who's participated in this new form of government, um, because they're the ones who've been, you know, wrestling with the things that work and the things that don't. So, but, but I think, you know, there are plenty of people who are going to have opinions. And I think, um, you know, I, I, the, the League of Women Voters has already, you know, hit the ground running and they're ready to, you know, they've got some suggestions and that's a, that that's one starting point. I would hope that we'd also have some, I don't, I guess I'm curious what kind of administrative support or what kind of, um, you know, consultant support we would or would not have, but that's something we can figure out later. We can, we can deal with it either way. Thank you. Last question for you, Andy. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Well, I guess I sort of, you know, referred to it at the beginning, but as somebody who was on the Charter Commission, who chaired the Charter Commission, and who, you know, strongly advocated for passing the Charter, uh, there, there might be some folks who think that I'm here to defend, you know, the, the stone tablets that we engraved the Charter into. And I, I really don't feel that way. I feel like, um, you know, that was then and this is now, and that was an attempt to find something that would pass muster and get a majority of votes at the time. And now that we've transitioned to that, and this is the status quo, you know, I'm, I'm interested in figuring out how to make it better. So I'm not, I'm not wedded, wedded to the current charter. Um, and, you know, I, I think it'll be an interesting process. I, and I, I look forward to again, collaborating with people who have different opinions about what we're trying to accomplish and trying to get us to, to pull together in some way and having some sort of common vision. All right, Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time. And- um, Thanks for this process, it's, it's made it easy. <laughs> I'm glad and, and I appreciate you bearing with the clunkiness of me figuring out why uh, I didn't have the right questions and dealing with me when I did. 
Thank you. Um, all right. So Athena, if, oh, George, Councilor Ryan, you unmuted? Yeah, just for a quick second. Do you want me to uh, do this uh, when we've reached the two minute mark or do you, or you feel comfortable? We I think we did pretty well time-wise this time, but I'm just mm -hmm. thinking we're not, who's the timekeeper and do you want a timekeeper? And if you do, one way to do it is just without saying anything, I just pull this up and then you know that it's time and two minutes have, have gone by. Sure. Uh, up to you. What What do you want to do? That would be helpful. I, I was not budgeting this specifically the two minutes, but I think that would be okay. helpful. Thank well, you. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to move you back Andy. to the audience. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. Okay, thanks. Um. All right. Thank you. Uh, Darcy, you're in the attendees twice and you are our next um, interview. Could you raise the hand of the account that you'd like us to bring in? We also have about three minutes. So, oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Athena, could you bring Darcy in? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. George, thanks for the suggestion on timekeeping. I was looking at the bigger picture time, not the two minute time. So I appreciate that. All right. Um, Darcy, are you able to hear us? Uh, you are muted, Darcy. So, oh, there we go. Excellent. There we go. Hi. Hey. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you. Do you mind if we start two minutes early? Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Just let me find. Um, uh, <laughs> I just got confused by being on twice. Um, there we go. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have six, but uh, am I still at six? Um, I'm still at six questions uh, that we're going to run through today. And um, we ask that you keep what your responses to one to two minutes per question. Um, we are keeping the process the same for everyone. So we do not have an opportunity for a dialogue. I will be asking you the questions today. And uh, we've got two days of, of interviews uh, ahead of us. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right, thank you. So starting off question one, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Um, I, I believe the role of the Charter Review Committee is um, it's set, up, set out in the charge um, and um, it's to periodically look at how the government is doing and whether changes need to be made to make it work better. Um, I think that especially makes sense now when our form of government is new and we've had five years to see how the first go at the charter has worked out. Uh, I'm particularly interested in how the charter can be um, amended to better fulfill um, the promises made in the areas of public participation, checks and balances, transparency, inclusion, diversity, that kind of thing, and um, protecting the interests of long-term residents. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that will make it successful? Um, I have a deep understanding of how the council and the town manager work after spending three years as a town counselor. Uh, as a member of the League uh, Charter Review Task Force, I've had a chance to get a really good understanding of the Charter Commission process. Um, I've read the Charter Commission minutes and the memos from the Collins Center, which are, were hugely helpful and have already uh, looked at a lot of the potential issues in some, some depth. Um, I'm a big picture person who likes to look at the overall goal and keep it on track. And um, as all of you probably know, I'm particularly interested in climate action and sustainability. Um, so I can bring that lens to the process. Thank you. How do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? 
Um, I actually watch your meetings. <laughs> I watch the town council meetings on a regular basis um, uh, and uh, find them very interesting. I uh, come to some of the standing committee meetings, uh, not all, and um, I read the news. Uh, I read the Indy and the Current, and um, I read the meeting packets and the and the motion sheets and watch the recordings if I can't make the meeting. So I I would say I'm probably very well informed. Thank you. Could you tell us about an experience that you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it and what did you find challenging? I am part of a whole bunch of different um, non-governmental groups. Um, I am a founding member of the Local Energy Advocates and work with a, a small group of board members to plan fundraising projects, presenters, and meetings. And although we sometimes disagree on projects, we work together really well. We res respect each other, which I think is like the most important thing when you're working with a group. Um, I'm often the one who sets an agenda and meetings while others uh, facilitate the meetings and projects. Um, I think uh, a group can agree to disagree uh, and there doesn't need to be unanimous agreement. Um, then that respect is the most important element when working together. Um, I also have worked as a non-voting member of the Valley Green Energy Working Group uh, for a very long time. And before that, it was the Western Mass Community Choice Energy Working Group, uh, which included staff from Northampton and Amherst and, um, and folks from the Pelham Energy Committee. And that work has, that group has worked together fairly spectacularly and has ended up accomplishing a lot uh, in the in soon providing greener, cheaper electricity to Amherst residents. Thank you. Uh, please briefly describe two or three activities that should be part of the work plan for this group. Uh, I'm assuming that probably the first thing we would do is outreach to well, I think there are probably a, a number of things that we could probably do simultaneously if we were um, uh, designating different people to do different things. But um, I think we need to do outreach to the community um, and to, as as Andy said, to, to folks who have had day-to-day -day understanding of how the charter has worked. Um, uh, we need to uh, look at what other charter review committees have done recently, uh, because um, that is one thing, working with the League of Women Voters, that has been extremely interesting to see what other um, um, council manager towns have done with their charter review committees, like Cambridge, Bridgewater, um, and uh, have come up with some, some new ideas, have come up with ideas about how to organize the charter review, et cetera. And so I think uh, also we need to sort of figure out how to pri prioritize the changes, you know, divide them into major and minor changes, provide pros and cons of the proposed changes, um, uh, and some degree of explanation so that not only does the council understand what's being proposed, but that the community understands it. Thank you. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? I, I, I think I'm a strong candidate um, because I am fair-minded and because I'm interested in particular in advancing the good government principles, um, that's why I got interested in doing it with the League of Women Voters. Um, 
you know, I really highly value transparency, checks and balances, accountability, and et cetera. I already mentioned them. Um, and, and really, um, I want to ensure that that's the way we conduct our government in Amherst. Um, I'm interested in having government that responds to our need for sustainability for a new normal that is the normal of the younger generation that's coming up. Um, and I also am proactive in offering new ideas um, that new are good new ideas that are good ideas. <laughs> Darcy, thank you so much for, for joining us. That is uh, the extent of our questions. Sure. Um, thank you so much. We will move you back to the audience. Um, and great. Um, I am going to suggest, oh, Athena, do you recommend that we continue if our folks are here or uh, pause to make sure we're starting on the accurate time. Um, the times aren't listed in the agenda. So oh, and perfect. it looks like John's here. So I think we can yeah. go ahead. We can bring John in. That would be great. Thank you so much. Hi, John. Once you get situated, if you can um, un unmute and if you'd like to turn your video on, that would be great. Am I on? We can hear you. Uh, but no video yet, huh? No video yet. Not required, but give you a minute to find it. I am not sure why I can't get the uh, video on. Uh, maybe we can just do this with. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely just do audio. Totally fine. Okay. All Sorry right. That. No, that's okay. No, no penalty uh, against having no video. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, hi, John. Thanks so much for for joining us. Um, as I think you might have heard from some of the other interviews, we will go briefly through um, six questions today. I will ask them uh, to you, and if you could keep your responses to one to two minutes, that would be great. Um, does that sound good? Sounds good to me, yep, thanks. All right, here we go. Question one, so could you share with us what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Uh, well, the Charter Review Committee is, it's my understanding, tasked with the review process every year ending in a four uh, to suggest uh, recommendations uh, to the Town Council uh, in, uh, in ways to, in which the charter can be improved. And, uh, I think that the, uh, the charter is kind of a, a work in progress. I, I don't view it as a, a finished document, although it's really impressive in its, uh, depth and scope, but I think there are some areas that, uh, need, uh, attention in terms of the power, uh, balance between the town manager and the town council, um, and uh, I think that uh, I would look forward to sitting down with a group of people who are really studying the charter and uh, figuring out ways that the uh, power imbalance uh, there can be uh, uh, analyzed and, and rectified, if that's what people agree to. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Uh, well, the, um, the first thing that I would mention in the, the, the list that you provided would be the uh, variety of life uh, experiences, skills, 
uh, and occupations. I've had a wide variety of those. And uh, among the more outstanding ones, I think, for this position, um, uh, I was a um, an operations specialist at a small biotech here in Amherst for a while. And part of my tasks there were, was uh, to distill complex technical manuals into processes and procedures that would be used uh, as protocol in the lab that we were working in. Uh, so I think that the the ability to analyze technical stuff and distill it into understandable and usable components uh, that other people can uh, work with is a really important skill. Um, I also um, have uh, experience as a, a union shop steward when I worked at UMass and uh, I have had a variety of clinical experiences that include uh, working in disadvantaged communities um, in Springfield and Holyoke. I was at the Holyoke Health Center uh, for several years. I was in a program in Gondora Mental Health Services in Springfield and Holyoke for several years. And I was uh, employed at uh, Cooley Dickinson uh, in an outpatient substance abuse clinic uh, also for several years in Northampton. Uh, very uh, demographics there, but uh, uh, working on similar problems. And uh, I think that those experiences have given me a, a really deep appreciation for um, minority communities and disadvantaged communities. Uh, in terms of community engagement uh, and outreach, again, I mentioned my uh, union experience as a shop steward. Uh, I also was a, a Canvas supervisor uh, when Mass Fair Share was working in this part of the state. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, sort of imploded as uh, a couple of my fellow Canvas managers and I discovered there were some discrepancies in the books that led to an investigation and the shutdown of Fair Share. Um, but uh, we were uh, organizing Canvas to actually go into neighborhoods and talk to people directly uh, about political changes uh, that they could advocate for and work with uh, fair share to implement. Uh, uh, I've also served as a uh, town meeting representative. Uh, I was on that in that position for six years in Amherst uh, during the parking garage debates and um, had some experience in dealing with uh, town government in that uh, aspect. Thank you. Yes. How do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Uh, well, I read the uh, bulletin slash gazette, uh, the indie and the current on a frequent basis. Uh, I do attend uh, town and uh, town meetings and zoning meetings, uh, not infrequently, not every single one, but not infrequently. And um, I also am now a, a member of uh, an alternate member of the zoning board of appeals, and I get information uh, about uh, pending issues that way as well. Great. Thank you. Tell us about an experience you've had collaborating with a group. What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Uh, I think the most salient one would be uh, working uh, with doctors at Bay State Hospital's pain management clinic in uh, joint case management meetings. Uh, we would discuss patients. We would come up with different ideas about what was going on with the patient and uh, come up with different strategies uh, how to best um, help the person. And uh, that was really rewarding in that uh, there was a, a great exchange of ideas. Uh, everybody brought a different uh, type of expertise to bear. And it was really important to uh, hear other people expressing their opinions about what was going on and the mechanisms behind it and how best to fix it. Um, it was sometimes frustrating in that uh, there were some power discrepancies uh, on the uh, that, that varied from year to year, depending on who was chairing the joint case management meetings. Um, there were a few uh, a few people who were extremely good about that and a few people who were not. Uh, and uh, that, that was frustrating when there were people in charge who were not uh, compassionate or competent. Thank you. Yep. Please briefly describe two or three activities that should be part of the work plan for this group. Uh, I think first order of business would be for everybody to basically go home with a copy of the charter, read it, reread it, underline it, excerpt it, 
come up with points that they feel like need to be worked on, and then also put together, uh, if they can, possible ideas about solving those problems that they've identified. And then we get together as a group and we uh, express our opinions on what we found. Uh, we discuss the options that we present and um, we come up with um, sort of majority feeling uh, uh, consensus on what to do and uh, maybe allow for a minority opinion also to be in the final report. And then we give that over to town council for their final actions. Thank you. Last question. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Um, well, I, as you probably are aware uh, from my editorials and papers and, and so forth, uh, I'm highly opinionated, but I, uh, I regard myself as a uh, sort of a, a deep thinker, and I like to think that I can uh, learn uh, quickly in a variety of situations and uh, uh, adapt and uh, use those, uh, those things that I've learned to affect solutions. Um, and I really uh, would value highly the opportunity to work with a group of like-minded people who want to push hammers forward. And uh, uh, I would accept the fact that I'm not gonna share everybody's opinion, but I would be uh, more than happy to hear those opinions and to be part of the process. John, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Appreciate thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. um, Athena, if you can move John back to the audience, we have a moment. Thank you. All right, folks, um, we are going to take a small break here. Uh, we've got two interviews remaining um, and we're, Lynn, yes? I three. think we have three. Three, three, yep, you're right. Three. Um, gosh, all over it today. Um, three interviews remaining, and we are going to take a, ten, I'm going to say 10 minute break, and then we'll recoup and see if we need 10 more minutes. Does that sound good? All right, so let's come back here. It, it'll be 11 minute break. Let's come back here at 720. Please turn off your video and make sure you're still muted. Thanks, y'all.
All right, folks, it is 719. Our next interview is at 730. Oh. It is 719. Our next interview is at 730. Um, and they are not here yet, which is absolutely understandable because it's 720. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and extend our break to 730. Thank you all for your patience in this. Um, we'll check back in at that point and we will go from there. Thank you. Break till 730.
Hey, Bernie, I noticed you just joined. We were taking a little recess because the committee got through the first interviews a little bit more quickly than we expected. So we'll get going in a minute. Anna, if it's okay, I'm going to bring Bernie in. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Yeah, good evening. Hello. Hi, Bernie. Technically, the committee members have one more minute. So I'm gonna I'll I'll give them oh, their, okay, their full minute. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining us today. All right. Here we go, folks. Welcome back. Uh, I hope everyone's break was restful. Bernie, thanks so much for joining us. It oh. is 730 and we are continuing on with the Charter Review Committee interviews on Tuesday, June 4th. Bernie, the way this is going to work is we've got six questions for you. I will ask them and uh, we ask that you keep your responses between one to two minutes. Um, and we are keeping the questions the same for everyone. So there's not an opportunity for, for follow-up questions at mm -hmm. this point. Or okay. what, what one to two minutes is likely to be a challenge for me. Because... Well, we will, okay, um, George will, George will very helpfully raise. <laughs> I think George has got his, his timer ready. And, yes. Yeah, we're, we're all set. Let's, let's see how fast I can talk. All right. All right. Here we go. So. Uh, question one, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? Well, the Charter Review Committee is one is a year in four, year, every year ending in four mandate. So it's pretty common for charters to have these review periods every, well, they're intended to be every 10 years. There's really two pieces to the Charter, two large pieces. One is what state law says we have to have, and the other is, so that's uh, prescriptive, and then there's the permissive piece, which is the the, the structure of committees, the rules, the, the other uh, aspects uh, sort of filled in by the council, which the council's trying to govern. I look at the council as a body that's evolving. I don't have a specific set of strengths and weaknesses or changes in mind. Um, I, I think we've had five years of in, in some months of experiment here. And let's take a good look at that. Let's find out what's worked, what hasn't, what can be done better? Um, what do we need to get rid of? Uh, I'm inclined to look at things like time management, how information flows into the council and out of the council, um, the committee structure. Uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate to, uh, to have a charter commission that took great care in crafting the charter. So, um, there's some a real good solid framework that we're setting. Thank you. You're nailing it on timing so far. Um, based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? I put a bunch of, uh, uh, of what I, my experiences and credentials, I, I, I've written that up pretty extensively in the uh, statement of interest and I'm I'm sure you've all read that and yeah, maybe had a chuckle or two over it, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to repeat it. Um, I think what I, the, 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 the length and the extent of my involvement in local governments, I think is uh, a real strength of mine. I, I, um, I, I, what I bring is an understanding of how governments work, um, a willingness to try another way, a willingness to try to uh, Im improve things. Uh, and a willingness to make decisions in an open fashion. So uh, uh, I do want to say something about my work, that work ethic and ethics. Uh, I come from a small city. I have a working class background. Um, scholarships and factory work got me through college. Um, I came through a learning that government, uh, and I firmly believe the government has to act in the best interest of people. Um, 
sometimes that makes for very difficult decisions, but those decisions have to be made. And those decisions have to be made openly um, without favor or bias. And, and I, I've tried to bring those ethics to my role as a selectman, to my role as a manager, to my role as a county commissioner. And I bring those ethics and that outlook to um, the, the, the Charter Review Commission if I'm selected. Thank you. How do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Uh, I was just thinking about when, when I was the first elected selectman in Belchertown, we had uh, three daily newspapers, a weekly newspaper, and two radio stations covering our meetings. Um, now we get, maybe Scott does some stuff for the Gazette every now and again. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's really difficult. Um, I use the town's website. I get all kinds of notices via email from the notification through the notification system. I try to access video um, when I'm, when I've got a uh, when I, I really need to see what was going on. Um, posted agendas are great. Meeting packets are great. All the information is there. Um, the list of council votes is uh, is, is particularly helpful. Uh, and then there is the newspapers. Um, there's blogs. Uh, the Amherst Current does a pretty good job of uh, kicking the week off with a, a week in focus and, and doing specific essays on topics. Um, I chat with friends. I random Facebook posts. Um, but the absence of a local press is a real drug. Uh, it makes it difficult to uh, keep up with information, and it also makes it difficult to govern because it's harder to give people information if you don't have the press there. Um, so, you know, we're, we're get, we've got a new communications director coming in and hopefully we'll see some, uh, some different approaches and some, some, some other things tried to, to kind of get the word out there to people. Thank you. Could you please tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it and what did you find challenging? <laughs> um, collaborating with groups sort of defines my um, my work history. Uh, there hasn't been a, too much of a time when I haven't been part of a, a, a group, a team, um, working on a, a, a challenge, working on a treatment plan for one of our clients, working on a, a budget, uh, um, working on a building, um, literally building a building, um, project planning, implementation. Um, and when I was looking at this question, I said, well, you know what I do in town? Well, I was part of the group that um, reviewed the town's bylaws. And that's where I got to meet uh, Pat. <laughs> and um, uh, was, was, was part of that. And I thought that was a really good committee. Um, everybody was willing to do some work. Everyone was willing to express opinion. Everyone was willing to offer guidance. Uh, everyone was willing to challenge one another politely, nicely. Reasonable people disagree reasonably um, on what, what was going on. And I thought um, that was very enjoyable. The challenge was the, the range of activity that we had to uh, take a look at in terms of the town bylaws. Um, I find with uh, committees that um, or, or groups that leadership in a group is situational, that people will have, one person would have a, could, could very easily take the lead at a particular meeting or a particular discussion because they've got some interest, they've done some work, something that resonates with them. So you got to be prepared to, to have that happen. Um, and you, you also have to um, uh, look at not only who's around the table, to make sure that you've got a good representation in the group. But you've got to make sure that you also have to look at who's actually offering opinions, offering information, who's actually participating, who you, you want to make sure that the group doesn't intimidate certain persons. You want to make sure that people have a, feel free to, to, to express themselves, to, to make a point, and that if there's criticism, like I said, reasonable people disagree reasonably. So um, 
my personally, I prefer small groups rather than large ones. Uh, I think it's easier to organize them and, and, and keep them going. But, you know, a group is what you end up with. Thank you. If you could please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group. Well, for me, the obvious one is um, getting everyone to agree on the charge. Uh, you know, you, you, the charge seems fairly straightforward, but um, you're going to need to go through and tease out what it is the committee can actually focus on and make recommendations on versus the language that's framed by statute and is basically unchangeable. So the committee's got to come to a consensus pretty quickly on, well, this is, this is what the charge means to us and get some feedback from the council that, yeah, you got it right. So that would be the first task. Another task that I'd say would be identifying resources that can help the committee. Uh, that could be staff. That could be uh, persons who, from other communities who participated in uh, uh, charter reviews. That we have a, you know, I'm a, I have my MPPA from UMass. We have a great public policy program there. Uh, wonderful staff who could be called on to help. Um, you know, and there's there's plenty of literature out there. I started, I actually started sampling some. I also want to mention that while I was um, in Deerfield, I was a member of the uh, Mass Manager's Form of Government Committee. And they're still around and they're available to provide guidance um, and um, uh, suggestions to towns who are, have charters and are undergoing charter reviews at no cost. So that that would be uh, that would be two things. The third thing would be to identify constituencies. You know who who are all the interested parties in their mini, um, and how do we best as a committee as a group? How do we best to reach out to each of those constituencies? Um, you know, what you want to avoid is the, there's a handful of people in town who are really well informed and show up at every meeting and, you know, they have a fine, they're going to be there. What I want to hear from <laughs> is the folks who don't do that, uh, but who are impacted by the, by the, the, the charter and the actions the commission takes. Thank you. Last question. What else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the charter review committee? Um, well, I'm told I write well, and I think I do. I can craft a reasoned argument. I can make uh, diplomatic statements. And I can be as subtle as a train wreck if the situation requires it. Um, I've got a pretty good sense of humor and like to use that to diffuse situations, um, stressful situations, and uh, uh, as a way of, of opening meetings to get people to relax and come into their role. So um, that's about it. Bernie, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us today. Okay. And once again, we're all proving that town government in Massachusetts is nocturnal. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bernie. Um, we are gonna, Athena's gonna bump you back to the audience. Well, I'm gonna go and um, um, I rushed through supper to make this meeting. So I'm going to selfishly go have dessert. <laughs> you know what, that, that sounds great. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye Bernie. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, our next interview is Julian Hines um, and Julian's already here with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and Bring them in. Thank you. Hi, Julian. Hi, can you all hear and see me okay? Yes, we can. Do you mind if we start a couple minutes early? Yeah, absolutely. Go right awesome. ahead. Thanks so much. All right. So um, thanks for, for coming out tonight on, on this lovely Tuesday. We are, as you know, conducting interviews today and tomorrow for the Charter Review Committee. And um, we have six questions for you today. We ask that you keep your responses to between one to two minutes. Um, and to ensure that all of the interviews are the same, we are not 
we don't have the opportunity for a back and forth or follow up um, during this process. We just have our six our six questions. Um, sound good? Sorry, right. good. you all got my cover letter. Yes, we have the statement of interest. Yes, thank you. All right, so question one. What is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements of the Charter? Yeah, absolutely. So I think we start with what's the role. I know, obviously, there's some folks who are looking for a council mayor form of government. There's some folks who would like to move back to town meeting. Um, and I guess not that those aren't reasonable points to be brought up and had, but the Charter Review Committee isn't the place for those. The Charter Review Committee is looking at specific areas within the Charter, and state law sort of doesn't prohibit us, but it guides us to have specific realms of interest rather than examining the entire form of government. We just went through a government change and bringing about another government change four years later, just as sort of folks are getting on their feet, um, might be might be short-sighted in my, at least in my view. And I think that even if there is a merited argument for another change, I think it this isn't the place for it in the Charter Review Committee. I think this is the place where we have to look for um, specific amendments and areas within the Charter that we realize might not have worked so well. Um, I think of the right to postpone. I know that's caused a lot of public interest um, and might be something that is worth exploring, worth exploring the potential to keep it. Maybe there's merited reasons for it we haven't heard. Um, or the potential to amend it so we're asking for additional an additional second, maybe, um, or a vote on postponing it instead. Um, so that's sort of where I'm thinking in terms of some areas to review. Um, I don't want to make an, exhaust, an exhaustive list, but another area I'm thinking of is the rule that uh, prohibits town staff, including staff in the libraries and the schools, to run for council. Um, something that I found a little odd is like a librarian or a school teacher um, could serve on school committee or library trustees, but couldn't serve on the council if they wanted to. Um, and obviously there's some issue with not having the, um, with not having, like we wouldn't want the town manager to also run for elected office, but, uh, firefighter or a school teacher or a DPW employee, there isn't really that same level of conflict um, between their role and being represented in town. So that's another area I might look at. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think one area of skill I'm bringing is I'm looking at a different perspective than is sort of the dominant um, perspective in town, which is obviously you all know, I'm graduating high school next week. And most folks um, on these committees are sort of from the same background. They're uh, living out their older years in town. And um, although that perspective is valuable to have, I think it's also important to bring some diversity. I have experience as uh, co-chair of the Public Shade Tree Committee, um, and I also lead a number of youth activist and youth um, community service groups in town. Um, so I've really gotten used to working with a wide variety of people, both on direct uh, sort of laws and governing and that sort of thing, as well as from the other side of that, the advocacy and service parts of it, and getting to work with all these different people who might see it differently than I do, might disagree with me on some issues, but still really have reasonable beliefs and um, would like to see some changes happen. So I think that sort of gives me a little bit of a depth of experience there. Thank you. Um, how do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, first, I watch pretty much all of your meetings, um, including the CRC meetings and the town council meetings. Um, I know finance committee meets during the school day, um, so I haven't been able to watch those as much, but uh, I try to attend 
when I can, um, as well as re sort of rewatch the reruns. Um, in addition, we have many great news sources that both offer news and offer a variety of perspective. Um, I read articles almost daily in both the Amherst Indy and the Amherst Current, just to sort of get a balance of where different perspectives are around town affairs, um, and then sort of get my news news uh, from the Gazette, like most folks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you tell us about an experience that you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, in a group, have run Sunrise Amherst, which has been quite an experience for um, for four years of high school, which I've been really pleased and happy to do. But something I've learned is that reasonable people disagree, right? We have, I think, 20 members. Um, and then my leadership team, we have three hub leads. So I'm an equal voice to three other people. And that has really taught me that I may not agree with everything that is being said or being offered, um, but that each group needs a space to sort of explore um, an issue and delve into the details on it and become educated on it and advocate. And I really enjoyed fostering those spaces where we have separate individual teams that work on different projects specifically. Um, so that's really been impressive to me to be able to foster a space for each of these discussions. Um, and in addition to that, I think it has sort of spirited intellectual debate is important. Um, and having those connections and having those debates, rather than sort of detracting from the movement, has rather helped me enhance my both working relationship and friendships with a lot of these folks. So I've really been glad to do that and gain different perspectives by doing that. Thank you. Uh, if you could please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think first it's important that we all get to know each other as a committee and sort of share our different experiences and why we're coming to the table. We're not um, looking to be adversarial or stuck in political factions in town. We want to work together to examine each of these pieces of the charter and get an understanding of where committee members' strong suits might be, as well as where um, they might not be as educated in the charter, um, and sort of get an idea so we can work collaboratively, collaboratively in that way. Um, the other thing I would mention is I think it's important that we look at um, sort of some of these things like uh, election clauses and how elections are held, as well as um, some of the parts of the charter that weren't fully implemented, such as the participatory budgeting we haven't had the funds for, but how could we rework such a clause to um, sort of maybe not be based directly in funding, but reallocate some funding or work to um, apply for a grant or something that would have a similar effect on the community? Um, I think a good example of that is sort of the community uh, capital request forms that people can fill out. Um, I'd love to see those used more and sort of find other avenues that folks can work in there as well. Great, thank you. Um, all right, last question, question six. Uh, what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I just think it's important to look at um, getting a wide variety of experiences, both within town um, and within my time on the Charter Review Committee, if selected, I'll have both been a high school student and soon to be a college student. So I'll bring both the perspective of a college student and a high school student to the committee. Um, and in addition to that, I really look forward to having the opportunity to continue working with the town. As you know, I've been very involved in town government. Um, and I think having that perspective in town government is both rare and important. And also I'm able to connect with people who might not be in, as involved in town government or might not understand all the ins and outs of it. But even if they're not as educated on it, still have opinions that need to be 
respected and thought of and reasonable people can disagree. So I think it's important to recognize that it might not be a matter of someone being uneducated as much as they just disagree on the matter um, itself. And so I think that bringing in people who might not have been involved in town government as much um, is also a strong suit of mine, especially young people. Great. Julian, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming out and sharing your responses with us. Yeah, thanks so much. I haven't had dinner, so I'm going to head out. But Excellent. good luck to the committee. And I <laughs> Enjoy. Have a good night. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, all right, folks, we have one more interview, and it is technically at 810. Um, we do have a phone number that's a call in. If that happens to be our 810 interview, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Um, otherwise, we can give ourselves about a 10 minute break. Uh, and, and regroup at 8.05, if that sounds okay to everyone. All right, that person is not raising their hand. So they are just an interested and engaged person who um, like me enjoys GOL meetings. All right, um, 8.05, sound good to everyone? I will see you back then. All right.
Hi, Raphael. I see you're in the audience. We were just taking a quick break. We will be right with you. All right, it is 8.05, GOL committee, come on back. I'm always inspired to paint whatever room I'm in whenever I see Councilor Ette's vibrant yellow background fall. All right, and like every time I'm like, oh, I worked hard to get this wallpaper up, but that yellow. All right, we're gonna wait for Councilor Ryan and then we will get started with our last one for today. Councilor Ryan, when you are back, if you can turn your camera on so that we know. Amazing. All right. Okay, folks, we've got one interview left for today. Um, and Athena, if you would be able to bring um, Raphael Rogers into the room, that would be great. All right. Hi there. Hello. How are you? Hi. Um, yeah. Am I... Am I, it, Raphael, is that right? Raphael's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, hi there, thanks for joining us tonight. We, and thank you for submitting your materials for the Charter Review Committee. Um, we have six interview questions that we'll go through today. I will be asking the questions um, and we ask that you keep your responses to between one to two minutes. Um, because we wanna make sure the interviews are consistent for every candidate, we won't engage in a back and forth or add any, uh, add any follow-up questions. We'll just stick to the, to the six. Does that sound okay? Sounds okay. All right, thank you. So starting in, what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee? Are there particular areas that you see as strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to the Charter? In my understanding that the Charter Review Committee focuses on like reviewing that 2017 Amherst Home Rule Charter in terms of the committee perhaps recommends changes that could enhance it. I think the role of such a committee is also about thinking about that enhancement based on like various community stakeholders. So how is the said charter sort of working for the town? Um, I think the review committee Part of their charge is just engaging stakeholders in understanding the elements of the charter, but also thinking about how to improve or enhance it. Um, so that sort of engagement with stakeholders could revolve around like surveys, reviewing of said surveys, and essentially like looking at the that stakeholder feedback to perhaps recommend changes that are submitted to the town council. There's some report writing involved too. Thank you. In terms of strengths, weaknesses, and what's missing, um, I would say as someone who's lived there for quite some time, I think an argument could be said, like this charter perhaps made government a little more nimble, efficient, um, more expedient in terms of its moves. But I think there's a weakness that some might argue revolves around like less representation, less civic engagement from the town. Um, it also perhaps could lead to less diverse um, bodies of folks sort of engaging in civic matters in town. Um, in terms of what's missing, uh, just reviewing the charter, I would say there are some things that I think are important to consider, such as like more clarity about the duties of the town manager. Thank you. Based on the selection guidance, what experiences and or skills do you feel you bring to the Charter Review Committee that can make it successful? Yeah, I've done a significant amount of reviews for the Department of Ed. 
and the university that I work at. So in terms of like review work, um, working with a team, collaborating with other folks, analyzing survey data, engaging the public, I think there's a lot of work that I've done in that area. Also help manage a graduate program. So that involves a great deal of outreach, partnership and report writing. Thank you. How do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? Perhaps too much watching of those videos from community be community and local organization meetings. Um, League of Women Voter Voters, Town Council. And I've been watching a lot of school committee meetings recently, just because I'm in, um, involved in teacher ed and school policy stuff. Um, so I'm also part of the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee at the Jones Library. Great, thank you. Um, great. Sorry, I'm taking notes and speaking at the same time, and sometimes I get it. Not working fast enough. All right. Um, could you tell us about an experience that you have had collaborating with a group? What did you like about it? What did you find challenging? So, in those state reviews, like we review like schools of ed um, based on some accreditation elements that the state has put forth. So I've done a number of those over the past decade. Um, so a lot of collaborating there, a number of stakeholders, a team of 10. Um, so a lot of that work. In terms of like um, my experience with that team and other teams, I, I like working with other folks. Um, I think you could learn much from them. I think in terms of like a review process, it's great to have a lot of insight from different folks, a lot of individuals with perhaps different skill sets. So I think for me, like collaborating in that space has been informative and enriching. Um, and I've learned a lot from others in, in terms of this question, because I reviewed them. Um, I think there's some challenges that come with um, collaborative work um, or work like this. If the goals aren't clear, if there's not a focus, it could lead to a lot of challenges. Thank you. Could you please briefly describe two or three activities that you believe should be part of the work plan for this group? I think raising awareness of the charge of this group is important, but also the element of sort of engaging stakeholders in said review process should be centered in the initial work that this group should be doing. Thank you. And last question, um, what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the Charter Review Committee? Uh, I've been an Amherst resident for over two decades. Um, I think I have some lived experiences, some expertise that I think could benefit this group. Rafael, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming out and, and taking the time to speak with us this evening. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Good to see you all. Thank you. Um, Athena is going to move Rafael into the attendees. And then I'm just gonna review quickly with everybody what our, our next steps are. Um, all right, folks, so we have uh, interviews continuing tomorrow. I'd like to thank again, the folks who came out today. Um, I'm going to send an email to the people who are scheduled for tomorrow, letting them know that today's interviews tended to be quick. It not a requirement. We gave them the time that we hoped they would be interviewing at, but if they can join us earlier, I'll ask them to, to please do so if we happen to go quickly tomorrow too. Um, and I will, I'll send that email tonight so that folks know, but we've got, uh, more lined up for tomorrow. Please review the SOIs just like you did for these. And are there any questions from the committee before we sign off, Lynn? Given that we only have six interviews tomorrow, although we do have a gap mm -hmm. at, between the fifth and the sixth interview, uh, are we also going to deliberate tomorrow? No. We aren't because not. we didn't post it. Partly that, but I, I actually chose not to post it um, intentionally. I think it's really important to avoid recency bias that we not go straight from interviews into deliberation. Um, I want to get committee members time to review their notes and um, really think about what folks shared as well as reread SOIs. Uh, and I, I think that if we went straight into deliberation tomorrow, we would lose that opportunity. So while I am sorry that I'm booking you three times this week, I'm hoping that it will be, uh, they will be relatively short. 
please come on Thursday prepared to deliberate. deliberate. Um, but no, I, I feel pretty strongly that we shouldn't move directly from uh, some of the interviews. If we had done all of them in that night, it might be different, but yeah. yeah. No, that's perfectly fine. I just want to, are we doing anything else on Thursday night? Nope. That's the only plan. The agenda. Okay. Great. Yep. That's all my questions. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, any other questions from the committee? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn if anyone would like to make move to adjourn. Vote. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Ate. I'm going to call the vote. Um, Councillor Ryan. Aye. Lynn. Aye. Councillor Ate. Aye. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. I am an aye. Thank you all. Athena, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Good night, everybody.